Hi, and welcome back to AB 474 Indoor Environmental Control. This is the second section of uh, the uh, series in that are covering Chapter 7 on solar radiation. And in this section, we're going to cover uh, the relationship between the Earth and the Sun and time. So let's go ahead and start by thinking a little bit about the Earth and the Sun. And specifically, we're going to talk about uh, the sun's position in the sky. And the fact that as we orbit around the sun, the position in the sky changes. Um, so if you want to take a look at figure 7-1 in your textbook and uh, follow along, this is going to be my test of art skills for the day. Actually, we're going to test them a few times today. Um, and I will do my best to, to talk and look at things, but if you want to see a little better drawing, you can uh, go and visit the um, uh, figure in your text. All right, so we tend to break down uh, the Earth's uh, orbit around the sun into four main sections. And this is the axis of the Earth rotating around. So we have what's called solstices. So summer solstice is June 21st or 22nd each year. And our winter solstice happens around December 21st or, or 22nd um, and then on the uh, opposites of that we would have because in between those two and opposite of one another we have equinoxes so we have a vernal equinox that happens on March 21st and we have an autumnal equinox that happens on September 22nd or 23rd each year and in between these the earth continues to follow along its orbit around the sun these just have very specific uh, and special characteristics in terms of uh, their occurrence and their, their placement, the placement of the sun in the sky when that happens. So let's take a, a moment and look at what do we mean by equinox? So when we say equinox, it literally translates to mean equal nights. Meaning that they're when there's an equinox, there's 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of dark. And this occurs for all points on the Earth. And the sun is directly overhead at the equator. Let's take a quick look. So when there is an equinox, the sun with respect to the earth is such that we're spinning and spinning and spinning, but the you have equal nights, 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night, everywhere on the Earth's surface, so all points on the surface. And the sun is directly overhead at the equator. Okay. And then a solstice literally translates to sun standing still. And in this case, the sun is directly overhead 
at the Tropic of Cancer at noon. All right, before we move on, I want to kind of point out that uh, we reviewed these um, uh, dates and definitions for when we would have equinoxes and solstices. It's important to remember when we talk about the dates that these are specific to our hemisphere. So we are in the northern hemisphere, and so what we highlighted today is for the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, spend a few minutes thinking about how are things different, because they are definitely not the same. Okay, so when we talk about yeah the vernal and autumnal equinoxes being on these dates, that is specific to North America. So let's take a look uh, in a little closer detail at what we mean whenever we're talking about the equinox and the solstice. Specifically, let's start with the solstice, or let's go with the solstice. So during a solstice, you have... Um, the Earth, which is rotating on an axis, like so, um, and we have a plane that is parallel, if you will, to the sun's rays, which are coming toward the Earth's surface. So these are the sun's rays. And this represents the tilt of the Earth. So this section is the amount between the line that is parallel to the line that the that sun's rays would be coming from and the tilt of the Earth. So tilt 23.5 degrees. Uh, and this is for the summer solstice. So if you can imagine, the sun's rays are coming across, and uh, at the Tropic of Cancer at noon, the sun is directly overhead. Uh, for the winter solstice, I'm just going to draw it the other direction. It's going to be very similar, but reversed. Okay, and so as a result of this tip and the spin, um, the position of the sun is going to change, right? So depending where you are on the surface of the earth, and as you spin around this axis, the position of the sun's rays towards you changes. So let's kind of summarize that with some words, and then we'll try to start to quantify it. And so, depending where you are on the surface of the Earth, it's going to make a difference. Depending on what time of the day it is. So remember, as you're uh, rotating around the axis, uh, spinning on the axis uh, over the course of the day, where you are and how that is in relation to the sun is going to look different. And the time of the year, so where we are in the orbit around. Let's see. Time of the day, time of the year. Yeah. All right, so let's spend a few minutes uh, talking about um, the zones that, that uh, we could break the Earth into. So we have the torrid zone, 
which occurs between 0 and 23.5 degrees latitude. So here's what we're getting ready to start doing is drawing bands around the Earth and talking about the commonalities within that band. So in the torrid zone, this is the region between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capri or the Tropic of Capricorn and the equator. All right, so region. The sun is directly overhead at the zenith, and we'll get to what that means when we talk about solar angles, at least once per day. So at least once per day in this region, the sun is directly overhead. Oh wait, at least once per year, sorry. Misspoke about that. At least once per year, it's directly overhead. Yeah, there we go. All right. The next zone we're going to look at is the temperate zone. It's 23.5 to 66.5 degrees latitude. And we're looking at the region, the band around the Earth that is above or below, so depending on where we're, whether we're in the northern or the southern hemisphere. So above or below the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn. Um, and it goes from there up to the Arctic or Antarctic Circle, depending again on whether you're Northern or Southern Hemisphere. And in the temperate zone, the sun is never directly overhead, but it is always above the horizon every day. All right, and then the next zone we're gonna look at is called the frigid zone. So it's cold, right? Yes. Um, and this is for latitude it is over 66.5 degrees. Um, this zone is going to be the band around the Earth that is located above or below the temperate zone. So all the way to the pole. And in this zone, the sun is either below or above the horizon at least one full day each year. Okay, so what does all that mean? Let me get that up there so you can see the frigid zone. So we have the torrid zone, the temperate zone, and the frigid zone. And we put them into context uh, with their relationship with the sun being directly overhead. So if you are in the torrid zone, which includes the equator, the sun is going to be directly over your head at least once per year. And if you're in the temperate zone, it's never going to be directly over your head but it will always be above the horizon every day, meaning there'll be a sunrise and a sunset every day. And if you're in the frigid zone, which is outside the temperate zone and goes all the way to the poles, 
Um, the sun uh, is going to be below the horizon line at least one full day each year and it's going to be above the horizon line at least one full day each year. Meaning that you will have at least one full day that you don't have, have sunshine and you will have at least one full day that you don't have dark. Okay, so that's what those mean. Now we're going to, to take that and the next thing we're going to talk about is start talking about time. So how do we measure time with respect to the position of the sun? So we're used to looking at time on our, our clocks or our watches or our cell phones. Um, and we're going to put that into a little bit of context. And we're going to talk about how do we normalize time so that we can use it in our calculations of solar radiation. So where does time come from? Why do we even need to have time? And essentially, um, the way we measure time is with respect to the rotation of the Earth. So our uh, clock is on a 24-hour cycle, and it takes approximately 24 hours for the Earth to make one full rotation. So that is the base for um, our system of time. And if we want to take a look at that, in terms of what that means, um, I'm going to look at just one hemisphere of the Earth, if, uh, if I can get my drawing skills in any sort of working order. Um, okay. Alright, so we have the sun's rays coming onto the Earth. And we have the Earth, which is rotating, and it's rotating at 15 degrees every hour. Okay? A so a fixed point on the earth's surface has a 24-hour relationship with the sun. And the Earth is going to be divided into a 360 degree circular arc using our longitudinal lines. That pass through the poles. And as we mentioned up above, but we'll write it out a little bit more longhand here, 15 degrees of longitude is equal to 1 24th of a day, which is one hour. So one degree of Earth's rotation is equal to four minutes of time. And another way to take a look at that is that a point on the Earth's surface that is 15 degrees west of another point will see the Earth will will see the the Sun in the same position one hour later. So if you have two points that are 15 degrees uh, difference from one another, the and, and they're due due west uh, of one another, we'll see the sun exactly the same exactly one hour later. Alright, so now we need to start uh, giving this time some formal names. Uh, so we are going to first um, 
discuss coordinated universal time. Um, also abbreviated UCT. Also more commonly known as Greenwich Civil Time. And this is at the zero longitude line. This is essentially uh, referred to as where time begins. And there's a wonderful uh, educational museum there uh, in Greenwich, England. And uh, they have a lot of really cool history about how the measurement of time has evolved over time. And you can stand with your feet on either side of the zero longitudinal line and ponder whether you're in today or yesterday or if it even matters. All right. Okay, so this is kind of our, our base zero is Greenwich Civil Time. Now we also have local civil time. abbreviated LCT um, and this is determined by your location all right so we have a base reference point for our time and then we have a local time based on where you are. So for example, um, you may have seen uh, GCT or Greenwich Civil Time plus five uh, and as being a local time. So when you go into your time settings, you might see that uh, based on where you are, you, you can pick uh, which time zone you want to be, um, you want yours to be converted to from that base zero time. And then we have standard time and this is clock time. So if you look at the clock, this is what your clock is going to say. And surprisingly, it's not necessarily going to be the same as the local civil time because we make adjustments. Um, and we have to think about our uh, clock time is based on a time zone, but within that time zone you have a lot of different locations uh, that uh, could be um, putting you a little bit ahead or a little bit behind that actual time. So if you recall, 0.15 degrees west, we'll see the sun in the same position one hour later. Well, it's not by a uh, by chance that our time zones are approximately 15 degrees west of one another and each time zone increases the time by one hour. So local civil, so standard time is our local civil time for a meridian near the center of the zone. So for uh, the US in the lower 48 states we have four time zones. We have the eastern time zone which is at 75 degrees latitude I mean longitude, 75 degrees longitude um, and it is our Greenwich time minus five and then we have central standard time and this is where we are at the University of Illinois uh, that is at 90 degrees longitude GMT minus six hours so we're six hours behind Greenwich England MST Mountain Standard Time 
and it's at 105 degrees longitude, and it's 7 hours behind our standard. And then we have PST, which are our Pacific time, and it's at 120 degrees longitude, and it's our standard time minus 8 hours. All right, so our central standard time, which is where we are in uh, Champaign, says 90 degrees, but Champaign is actually at 88 degrees. So you might guess that now we have to also account for that difference of two degrees between where we actually are and where the time zone says. And we'll get to that. But first we're going to talk about another correction to time that we do um, that we have to factor in when we're looking at uh, placing the sun based on time. And that is daylight savings time. So for some portion of the year we have to um, subtract off an hour due to daylight savings time. So when we do say like daylight savings, essentially what we're doing is advancing our clock time by one hour in the late spring keeping it through the summer and removing it in fall, but we'll keep it through early fall. So daylight savings time is our standard time, which we don't have an abbreviation for because we're only going to keep it for a few minutes, uh, which is our local standard time. which is our local daylight savings time minus one hour. Minus one hour. Right. And now we need to start putting things together. So uh, that last piece is still missing. So we still need one more measure, solar time. And so this is what we're gonna call our local solar time. Or one way to think of it is the sundial time. Um, it might also be called the apparent solar time. And this is time that is measured strictly by the position of the sun. So not specific to where you're located on the Earth's surface, but specific to the um, position of the sun in the sky. Okay. And now at this point we shouldn't be too far off from it with our um, standard time which is now accounted for daylight savings and it's accounted by, by the uh, for the time zone that we're in. So we shouldn't be too far off but we still need to make a little bit of a correction. So We have a slightly variable day, so it's not exactly 24 hours. It's based on, yeah, due to uh, the irregularity of the rotational speed. and non-symmetry of the Earth orbit and that sort of thing. Alright, so we need to um, come up with a way to 
make all of our different measures of time valuable to us for understanding the uh, relationship of the sun and the earth. So we're going to use this um, equation of time in order to give us a measure of time that we can use moving forward. And essentially what it does is it is a, a correction um, so that we can go from our um, local civil time to our local standard time. And we can use table 7-2 in our book or equation 7-4 to help us out with um, the equation of time that we need for this. All right. <clears throat> and then we need to be able to calculate this LST uh, specific to our longitude. This is where we get to this last piece where it's not necessarily that you're in the time zone, you want to get even more precise than that. So you just need to know your place that has, uh, you need to know the local longitude of the place where you are. And then we can put the pieces together uh, in our uh, equation. So one of the things I don't really like is that they didn't give a variable to the standard time. Uh, so I just abbreviate standard time in there. And it's the local daylight savings time minus one hour. So if we're not on daylight savings time at that time, you just put the time in for the standard time. And if we are on daylight savings time, you need to subtract off an hour. Okay, our local longitude minus our longitude for our uh, standard um, time zones. And so we're off from that by however many degrees and it's four minutes of change in time per degree west. And if you're the other way around you flip the sign. Plus equation of time which we just talked about in the prior statement. Alright, so this gets us to a point where now we can uh, have a measure of time that's reflective of specifically the position uh, of the sun in the sky. Uh, so we've corrected for uh, the time zones, we've corrected for time of the year, and we've corrected for daylight savings. So at this point um, we are uh, wrapping up, that, that wraps up the second section on Earth, Sun, and Time. And the next section we're going to cover is the third section on solar angles.